Hey everyone, welcome back to the Yossi Schmidt Show. Today we have Josh Nam on the show. Josh, please introduce yourself. Hi Yossi, uh, thank you for inviting me. My name is Josh Nam. I am the co-founder and co-CEO of Mop2.com. Um, we're the only social media platform on earth that was designed specifically to share articles. And so the quick version of that is we took the article sharing uh functionality of Facebook and distilled it into its own social platform, kind of like Twitter did with status updates and, and Instagram and Pinterest did with photos. Um, I can tell you more about myself, but I don't know if I want to bore your, your listeners that way, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So social media for, for articles, it's a very right. interesting idea. Like when I think of social media, I think of people um, interacting with each other, liking, reposting, retweeting, commenting, right. and Mob2 is just, not just, is social media just for articles? Correct. Yeah, now, how what we realize... Oh, go ahead. No, Sorry, no, yes. Con continue. Because continue. what we realized is that, that we realized two things. One thing that we realized way back was that in the future, and we're in that future, now that most people were going to get their news from social media. So we realized that years ago, that that was becoming the primary way for people to receive their news because it already had switched from print to television to the web and now to social media. So we knew that a social media platform for in quotes news was a good idea. Now, the way that most people still get their news, even though it's through social media, is in the form of articles. So we'd be on Facebook or we'd be on Twitter or wherever looking for news because I'm kind of a news junkie. I was told not to use that phrase, but I'm going to use it anyway. And there's kitten videos and there's people talking about what they had for breakfast that morning. There's people talking about their bad experience at, at the store. So there's a lot of other stuff besides news. So what we decided to do was to just take out the article part of that and make it its own platform so you don't have all these distractions. We call the distraction social media detritus because it's stuff that's beyond the articles. And so in doing that, we still allow for the social interaction because I agree with you. That's a lot of what people want to do. So you can comment on articles on, on uh, Mop2, as you know, and people have discussions all the time. So you still have that personal input. But if you're on a social platform just for articles, we allow you to do that without any distractions at all. And we also have a theory that people, you know, there's a lot of talk about fake news and using AI and using algorithms to deal with fake news. Our theory is much more simple. You're going to want to get articles from people you trust and who you respect and have similar interests as you. So even if we're not talking politics, we can be talking about gardening. And you might have a friend who loves gardening, and that person posts great articles about gardening all day long or recipes or psychology or cars. And so it saves you time because it's, it's sort of community-based, community-sourced article sharing. So you've got all these other people with similar interests sharing articles about the things you care about. And then you, in turn, share them to other users. Anyway, that was a long, a long-winded answer. I hope that answered your question. Can you, a person repost an article? Like, yeah, re so you retweet? Yeah, like a retweet. So you repost. Same exact thing. You, your page on Mop2 is divided into topics, which you pick. We have 27 site-wide topics, which are broad topics like sports, politics, news, and then they can customize the names of those topics on the page. So I always give the example, forgive me because I'm in LA, so of sports. So you might have a sports, you might like love sports. You have sports topics on your page, but just calling it sports isn't going to do it. So you might want to have a Dodgers topic, a Lakers topic, a Kings topic for each team, each sport. So when we share an article into Mop2, into sports, it goes on the site-wide sports topic. On your page, if it's a baseball article, it's going to go into Dodgers. When somebody else retweets or reshares that article, then they choose the topic on their page for it to go in. I hear. Is there a way for Mop2 to grow? I don't know how many users you have. That will be part of the review or not, but is there a way for Mop2 to grow? Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you. We have and this is a small number in the social media world, but we're proud of it. We have 25,000 monthly active users. And we're proud of that fact because we've spent exactly zero dollars on our marketing and advertising because we've had to do all of this ourselves. There's only two of us. My, my, my closest friend, we've been friends since 1982, and me. And he's a gifted programmer. Um, 
I'm more on the idea side, although we both do creative. And so we've done everything ourselves. Is there a way for Mopti to grow? Absolutely. We need to get funded because every single social platform on planet Earth, whose name you know, started out with either hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. And we've done everything ourselves. So it's like everything else. It'll grow through word of mouth. We had one major media article and our user base increased by six times overnight because of that one article. So I think um, that's proof of concept. There's lots of room to grow. Um, Pinterest, which people love, it's not my cup of tea, but people love it. It's worth, its valuation right now is over 9 billion with a B dollars. And, and they're sharing photos by topic, by category. So if you're talking at articles by topic, by category, if they're worth 9 billion, I don't see why we can't be worth 10 million. But that's going to take some growing. So yeah, absolutely, there's lots of room to grow. So the way Mop2 could grow is by people sharing that Mop2 exists, right? By sharing articles from Mop2, right? Like when I post exactly. my roundup, when I post the link on Twitter, I could post a sh- I could post the Mop2 link onto Twitter. Right. In fact, we have sharing directly to Twitter and Facebook, and we were the first social media platform to do that. At the time, people, literally, there were people who laughed at us and said, why would you want to share your content to another platform? And my answer was always that it's obvious why, because we're then directing them back to Mop2. So you can share content, any article, um, you have to be logged in to do this, but you can share any article from Mop2 to to Twitter. That's one way we'll grow. The other way we can grow, hopefully, is through articles. And and thank you again for doing the podcast, doing podcasts like this, word of mouth, marketing. You know what it comes down to. People, yeah, yeah um, people have to believe like a cool new thing to use it. And that means getting other people on board telling them, hey, have you seen this cool new platform? Mop you. That's what it's going to take. Is there like, I didn't go through their terms of services that much yet because I'm okay. not doing the review yet. But there's right. articles that you don't allow where you allow everything. We allow pretty much everything. We have... Some items in our terms, which we won't allow, and it has to be blatant calls to violence, common sense things, the way people used to understand that you can't say these things publicly on on platforms like that way back when social media began. So you can't have an outright call to violence. You can't have, um, you know, outright, very blatant, let's, I'll, I'll go with something personal, anti-Semitism. But, but if it's an anti-Jewish view or if it's anti this or anti that, we'll allow it because we, we are firmly on the side of free speech. We started before this even became an issue and that's always been our, our, uh, our rationale. But so we're, we don't confuse opinions with threats to violence. We don't confuse speech with violence. I mean, actual threats. That's the kind of thing that wouldn't be allowed a mob to. But other than that, we're very, very, Open. I see things on Mop2 every single day that I completely disagree with, but you know we walk the walk. You're saying you would allow like anti-Jews article. Let me just give an example. If someone were to be sh- were to share Jews control the weather, which I kind of wish we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in California, so not as much as you, but yeah. <laughs> Or Jews control the bank. I kind of really wish we did. Please, right. somehow, if we do, can someone fill me in on how to? Because I, I, I need to get some of that action. Try to see meeting. <laughs> yeah. I need some of yeah, that exactly. action. But anyways, people can share articles like that on my Right, right. If someone was saying, kill uh, Yossi Schmidt. Yeah, that, God forbid. God forbid, you're right. Sorry, I should have said that. Um, that wouldn't be allowed. Exactly, exactly. So if there's an outright call to violence. You know, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a neo-Nazi meeting at such and such place, and we're gonna figure out how to get those Jews. We wouldn't allow that. But if it's if it's you know Jews control the weather, Jews control the banks, or whatever. I mean, it's insane. But yeah, we'll allow that because we believe in free speech. There's a lot of things I don't like that people say. And what about misinformation? Misinformation is a, is a very subject, subjective topic. One man's truth is another man's misinformation. So I, I don't even like to use that term because it's been so propagandized. So yes, we will allow misinformation because it's up to you to decide what you think is true or not. And even more than that, it's up to you to do some freaking research 
to to see what the facts are and then interpret the facts. You have you have lots of leeway to interpret the facts however you would like. You don't have a lot of leeway to decide what the facts are. So misinformation, of course. So I've been a very big proponent of yelling about misinformation, meaning yeah. what you're saying. When Elon Musk brought Twitter, I'm sorry for bringing Elon Musk in, when Elon Musk brought Twitter, okay. Twitter and he said, right. we're going to take a, on misinformation, right? what is misinformation? Right. Who decides, like you're saying, yes, I get the community notes and everything else. I get all that. But who who decides misinformation? You're going to censor something based on someone else's opinion? Yeah, exactly. You know, my, my undergrad degree is in political science. And I don't want to date myself here, but I'm about to. So I was still in college. Be prepared during the end of the Cold War. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm older. I know. I saw the look on your face. I prepared myself for that. But I wasn't going to bring this up, but you asked the question. And I'm an honest guy. So, so. When they talked about misinformation in some of my classes, what they were talking about is propaganda that was used, specifically communist countries would use to shape public opinion. That's also called advertising. So, I mean, you know what, I, you know what I'm saying? Misinformation is a very nebulous term. And I, I have a bigger problem with the fact that everybody's labeling things they don't like misinformation. I mean, you know, you could say it's misinformation that, uh, you know, I don't want to insult anybody, but the, the Yankees are a great sports franchise. There's all kinds of misinformation out there. Sorry, I hope I didn't get a nerve. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not even into sports, so I'm fine. <laughs> I, I'm not either, to tell you the truth. But, but that, that's, that's my, my point, though, is that it's, it's a very nebulous term. It's very hard to define. The, like you said a minute ago, I think, the term misinformation has become misinformation because people label it anything they choose to do. On top of that, we get asked this all the time. What are we going to do about fake news? What are we going to do about misinformation? What are we going to do about dis disinformation? Are we going to use AI? Are we going to get a board like Facebook had of people to decide what's disinformation and what's not? We're not going to do any of that because as long as, obviously, as long as human beings are involved, there's room for error. And as long as it's technology, there's room for error. So we let the person decide. We treat our users, this is a shocker, but we treat our users like adults. They have to wow. make this. Never heard of such a know. Idea. Revolutionary concept. Wow. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, you, you, I know it's mind blowing, right? Your head just exploded. <laughs> As someone who reviews alternative social media platforms, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I needed to stop. <laughs> uh, I, I understand. And I'm saying it publicly. Wow. Yeah. So, um, that's very good. I really appreciate to hear that you uh, you let your users think for themselves. We we hope so. Yeah, we, we and, that. and people need to people need to realize whatever's on the internet is not necessarily true. Like you said, do your own Correct. research. Correct. When President Trump called something fake news, I'm sorry. I know most of my viewers are Republicans, but when President Trump calls something fake news. Because it's anti him, not saying it is true or anti or not or is true or not true, but right. you have to keep in mind when someone's saying an article against them is fake news. He might have some personal feelings. and might have his own thoughts. So yeah. think for yourself, like Josh said. Think for yourself. Do your own research. Yes, I in my roundup, I I I do as much possible thing to verify if it's true or not. Please, everyone, think for yourself. What Josh 100%. said is so important. So important. I'm begging you to think for yourself. No one else is t telling you to think for yourself. Yeah. I mean, when, when I was younger, there was a skill that they actually used to teach critical thinking. And that's actually a skill you can develop. And not only do I want people to think for themselves, but I want them to be intellectually curious. And if they actually care about something, that should spur them on to do more research and learn more and have more sophisticated opinions as their knowledge increases. And the, I think part of the problem, Yossi, is that not to sound like an old geezer, but, and I love technology, obviously, I own a technology company, but we have so much information at our fingertips and it's so easy to Google something or whatever. People just think, well, I'm just going to Google it and Google will tell me the truth instead of actually having enough background in a subject to 
be able to determine whether what you're reading or hearing is true or not. And, you know, in the old days, there's three television networks, they all walked in lockstep. Were we being told the truth all the time then? No, just people were more willing to accept what they were being told. And now that phenomenon is multiplied by a, a billion times. So there's always been, what they're calling misinformation has always been out there. And there are always been the people who were able to discern the truth or as close as we can get to it. I just think that there are less people who do that now. So we want to, we want to bring that back. I understand. I couldn't agree more with you, Josh. Thank really. You. It's mind blowing how people just can't think for themselves. Like you said, it's all about technology and people just like are drones. Yeah. You know, the, the meme with the chips, like they, the program to think that's what it is. Right. Right. Because we carry around a little device called a phone, which has more information than any humans have had at their disposable disposal. That's how tired I am. Disposal of human history. And so they think that they know everything because it's all there on the phone or on the computer. But obviously, that's that's not the case. And that's part of the reason why my, my co-founder and I started a social platform specifically for articles, because we love knowledge. We love news. We love history. We love science. So we wanted a place where people could share topics, articles about those topics and really learn as much as possible. And there's nothing wrong with gardening and cooking and the other things e either. Our personal interests lean more towards politics, history, science, uh, pet care. You know, <laughs> there's all kinds of things I'm up to. But but it's also a valuable research tool for that reason because it's only articles. Sorry, I didn't mean to purposely bring it back to Moptu, but I realized I just did that. No, it's, the... it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. This interview okay. is really about Moptu. I think people it, should go to Map2, even though I haven't reviewed it yet. It's not an endorsement, but it's a highly recommendation. Well, I appreciate that. And and I just want your listeners to know that they're going to see a platform that's a little bit primitive, where you don't have all the bells and whistles and all the fancy things that some of the other platforms have. But again, it's just me and my business partner. He's the only programmer. So I hope people keep in mind that we think if I may say so humbly, we've accomplished a lot for just two people with no budget. So we don't have some of the fancy things, but but we have the basics. We do a good job of it. And people can always contact me and you can be you can give out my personal information if you want. People can always contact me if they have any questions about Mop2. I'm happy to talk to any of our users or anyone who's a potential user. Awesome. All right, everyone. Remember to hold everyone accountable. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Check out Map2. Link will be in the description, in the show notes, wherever you find links. Josh's Twitter account and Josh's Map2 account will be in the show notes too. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hold everyone accountable.